Hi, I'm John, the engineer Turmel, running in this 2011 general election for Prime Minister of Canada. And today I'm going to be talking about democracy and the challenges to the media excluding candidates from debates, having run in more elections than anyone else in history. This will be number 75. I can say that I've probably been cheated more times than anyone else in history by the media excluded from a chance to score points in debates. Oh, this is the binder of all my couple of dozen cases where every time the TV station cheated me, I dragged them and the CRTC into court complaining and then stiffed them for the bill if I lost. It started in 1980 when there were 10 candidates in the Ottawa Center and they divided us up into two groups, the majors and the minors, and they gave one group 20 minutes and the other group 15. So they all got an average minute more than I did. So I fought that case all the way to the Supreme Court of Canada, and I lost. I fought another case, John Turmel versus CRTC, Supreme Court of Canada file 33319, which said, the applicant, Mr. Turmel, was a candidate removed from the debate because he refused to remove a badge. Imagine that. Rogers is dictating our appearance during debates. And I was removed on a question of appearance. Mr. Turmel filed a complaint with the CRTC alleging his removal amounted to denying him an equitable share of the free time partisan political broadcast during an election period as required by Section 27.4 of the Broadcasting Distribution Regulations. The CRTC dismissed the complaint, relying on the Ontario Court of Appeal decision in Greg Vezina versus CBC 1993, where the CRTC found that Rogers did not breach the broadcasting regulations because the provision does not apply to debate programs. So the judges decided we're going to say that debates don't have to be fair anymore. Therefore, it was within Rogers' discretion to exclude participants from the debate. And that is the state of law in Canada today. Big Brother in complete control. And it started back in 1980. Again, this was in Hamilton. Church meeting sparks uproar. And another headline, why candidate was excluded. And finally, church meeting open after all. And they let everybody participate. So oh, screaming made a lot of noise, paid off. <clears throat> then in 1981, in Spadina by election. Fight in Spadina, all candidates meeting. And that was because they had decided they were only going to have the three major candidates in the debate. And three minors showed up. And I said, let's just sit down and grab those chairs and we're going to stay. And the organizers gave up, moved the meeting to Big Convocation Hall at University of Toronto, and said everybody can participate. Then the moderator decided he was going to let the big three parties answer the question. And he wasn't going to let us answer. That was his way of stacking the deck. So I went up there and I said, I want to answer the question. And we got in a tussle, and he went fly. Well, I went flying first. He pushed me. When I came back, he tried pushing me again, and he went flying. And then they called off the meeting. Spadina Slugfest had it all. That was by Slinger. And I'll just read the paragraph. The all candidates meeting for the Spadina by election that landed up in Convocation Hall at the University of Toronto the other night was a schmazzle. But it was a spectacular schmazzle. It was the rootinest, tootinest, rip roarinest, rudest, most rambunctious election meeting held in these parts in ages. It was the meeting against which all other all candidates meetings will have to be measured. Then I ran in 1983 against Brian Mulroney in Central Nova, and CBC decided to have a debate with just the big three again, and I was excluded. So by election battles, Satter's peace in Central Nova, Termel fighting protest, injunction denied. I sued Global and Nancy Wilson for shooting off her mouth. She's now with CBC. She would said John Turmel is only there for publicity, not for respect. And basically, and said he's there to crash coffee parties. Well, I had gone to a Mila Mulroney coffee party to bring her a copy of my equation because I heard she was three years engineering math. And so anyway, I sued Nancy Wilson for slander. And then she ended up paying me 6000 bucks for her big mouth. That paid off. So then 1984, big federal election. And uh, so I made a bid to halt the televised debate. Turmel loses case against two debates. And then finally, at the very end, Turmel 
tries to stop the election because it hadn't been fair. And an exclusion of three candidates sparks TV debate boycott. New Democrat Evelyn Giganis came under harsh criticism Monday for taking part in a television debate that was not open to all six candidates in the Ottawa Centre by-election. Only Giganis, Liberal Lowell Green, and Tory Graham Bird were invited to the 15-minute debate, while the other three candidates were given one minute on tape to make their presentations. While Green and Bird left the debate after giving one-minute speeches, Giganis stayed and was interviewed for the remainder of the allotted time. And then we find out that at her time, the leader of her party, Bob Ray, leader of the working man, Ray also told reporters he supported Gigantis' decision last week to participate in a television debate that excluded minor candidates. He called the CGOH debate, for which Gigantis has been strongly criticized by her opponents, a political routine cooked up by the other two candidates. Yeah, they walked off the debate to support the little guys. Just a routine to silk stocking rich kid Bob Ray. Ray has said never in his political life had he been involved in a television debate that included all candidates. Yeah, they always used to fix it and keep the dangerous opponents away so he could waltz his way through. And now he's the trying to be the leader of the capitalists in the Liberal Party since he was no good as the leader of the working man in the NDP. 1986, la police de Trois-Rivières a arrested by the police for trying to participate in a radio debate and then let go. Then in 1988, candidate continues bid to get equal TV time. And then Eddie the Eagle of politics loses another one. He was the, the skier from Great Britain who kept coming last. And this Green decision, in the Trigger decision, says precedence. Similar but perhaps not identical issues have been raised in cases such as Termel vs. CRTC 1980, Termel vs. CRTC 1983, Termel vs. CRTC 1985, Termel vs. CBC 1987, Termel vs. CRTC 1987, Gomez vs. CBC 1984, and I wrote that case, and then uh, Termel vs. CBC in 1987 again. So almost every case to do with candidates' rights, equal time, I was involved. And then finally, 1988 was kind of fun. Scuffle disrupts candidate meeting, you can see right there. And uh, one of the moderators decided he was going to try and put do a citizen's arrest and came and grabbed me. I flipped him. So on the other side, the Carleton University newspaper has a picture of him on the floor and me above. And it says, John Turmel has the microphone and Larry Motus has the floor. So anyway, but again, I was charged, and then I tried to get the charges next. Then they eventually dropped the charges. Okay, candidate charges dropped. Uninvited candidate crashes election debate. In 1995, a debate involving four of the nine candidates in Ottawa any federal by-election was cut short Thursday when a fifth candidate, abolitionist John Turmel, tried to butt in. The debate had been organized by students at Ashbury College in Rockcliffe Park, the rich kids. And the Liberal, Conservative, Reform, and NDP candidates were present. Termel, who'd not been invited, showed up and demanded to be heard after the other four spoke. Kevin Godet, the Reform candidate, said Termel's persistent demands led the students to simply cut the meeting short. Well, that's fair. If everybody gets nothing, that's equitable. Rather than them get all the time and me none. And finally, another case, 1995, stealing the show when the police officer came and took me away from another debate. So this is never ending in Canada, and now it's official. It's official that the Supreme Court of Canada has said that since the 1993 Vezina decision, debates no longer have to be equitable. All candidates don't get on the debate anymore, and the media may exclude whomever they want. So now you know why I resent the candidates in the major political parties who I consider have no sportsmanship. They don't mind watching their opponents being cheated and taking advantage and getting all the free airtime. So that's different now, though, because of the Internet. In the past, I couldn't get on the debates, but now I can. If you go and you Google in the videos for Termel, Obama, McCain, You'll find that when they had their big Saddleback debates in the States, I videotaped it, and I spliced in my answers, too. 
So you get to go see the difference between the political party big shots with big money and big support, but little brains, versus Johnny Engineer with no money and no support, but lots of brains. So go see the difference between brains and money when you see the difference between what they could have had, Termel, and Obama, Guantanamo Obama, promising to end the wars and end the torture, and now he's made everything worse. What a disappointment. Well, now I'm going to do the same thing in the Canadian media. I'm going to go grab the videos of the leaders walking around and quacking like ducks as they waddle between groups of supporters to see who can applaud them the loudest as they come up with their vain promises to want to do stuff for us without ever telling us how. That's the difference. They don't lie to you. They really do want you to have it. And they know what you need. We need this and we need that and we need that and all these issues need to be addressed. They know we need this. Then you get elected four years later, you say you did nothing. You broke your word. He said, I didn't promise I'd do anything. I just promised that you needed it and that I wanted you to have it. Couldn't give it to you, but I didn't mean I didn't want you to have it. And you watch how many times in all of these upcoming episodes that you hear the candidates tell us what we need and what they want and never once explain how they're going to engineer it. And that's my specialty, how I'm going to engineer it. So from now on, I'm going to be doing a nightly news show where I'm going to grab the sayings of the party leaders as they waddle around the country, you know, in front of hometown crowds being cheered. Well, new game now. They can't stop me anymore. They can't exclude me, and people don't get to find out how much sharper I am than the lawyers. Yeah, we need more lawyers in Parliament. The world's breaking down. Call in the lawyers. Go out there and vote yourself a lawyer when you could be voting for Johnny Engineer. So, yeah, stay tuned for Termel News when I'm going to follow the election coverage and stick in my answers to all their ridiculous proposals and hopefully make a lot of fun of them too, so that it's going to lead up to the big debate when I'm going to get to participate. In 93, I'd made a million bucks with my underground casino, and I financed 80 candidates. I had to spend it before they took it away, you know, so I spent it all. More candidates in the Greens, but I didn't get on the debate with the other leaders, so this time here, I will. They can't stop me from participating in the leader's debate and then posting it like I did with Obama and McCain. So now you're going to get to see the difference between a candidate with brains versus a candidate with cash. So anyway, I'm the guy with the no cash and a lot of brains. And this is a fantastic election opportunity because of the threat from the Japanese fallout coming because there are pro uh, programs I endorse, like legalizing marijuana and giving you interest-free loans, that if they don't get instituted really soon, a lot of you are going to die and you're going to deserve it because you had a chance to vote for an engineer who could have fixed it and you didn't. Now, for the record, how many times have you Trekkies watched Mr. Spock reprogram the central computer and fix a world? We're at the same juncture now, too. I know how to reprogram the bank central computers to give you and everyone interest-free loans, which puts everybody back to work in useful enterprise. No more bailiffs and lawyers and bill collectors and social servants when everybody's got enough money and a good job. You vote for John the Engineer and jobs, or you keep voting for the lawyers and the unemployment line, and maybe they'll give your job, your kid a job as a dead war hero, because you know that the big parties are going to spend $30,000 million on new warplanes, and I'm going to get us out of wars and decommission nuclear. Who else is going to do that for you? So, vote John the Engineer Termel for Prime Minister and spread the word. So, final admonition. Stay tuned for an election like you've never seen before. And the only thing I ask you to do is go spread the word about my videos so that the Canadian people at least have the opportunity to know that they can vote for interest-free loans and legal and probably free marijuana to fight the cancers that are on the way with the Japanese nuclear fallout. So spread the word or you deserve to die.